Hi everyone and welcome to today's special episode. Now one of the most common questions I get asked is how do you set up online professional multiplayer? As seen in such games like Clash Royale, For Honor, Fortnite and Destiny 2. Well, that's actually quite a long uh, answer to that question. There's a lot of work that goes into making an online multiplayer. It's one of the hardest things to, to accomplish for video game development. But if you're serious in getting your game into online multiplayer, there is thankfully a tool out there that can help you. And that's what today's video is all about. It's introducing you to this new plugin uh, that is out there on the on the uh, marketplace for you to download and use for your pro for your projects. So the first thing to do is you need to head over to mar on the marketplace and uh, purchase and download the blue uh, multiplayer with blueprints AWS plugin. This plugin combines the use of four different Amazon uh, services web services uh, such as GameLift, uh, Cognito, uh, Lambda and DynamoDB. These four services will give you everything that you'd come to expect with a fully professional, dedicated multiplayer experience. With that downloaded, you then want to head over to Epic's instructions for downloading their source code. You'll need the source code to set up the dedicated online matchmaking system and server. Uh, so you need to follow the instructions to access the GitHub repository, uh, branch off that and get uh, the source code for Unreal Engine. Follow the instructions available to you to download, install the uh, and, and uh, compile the Unreal source code. And the third step you need to make sure you've got is Amazon Web Services, obviously. So head over to Amazon Web Services and sign up to their services. There is a free tier, but you're probably going to need a, a paid tier to in order to get full access to all of their services. With these three steps done, the next step is to open up your engine and install the plugin. So with this plugin, you, you erase all use of C++. You can do all of this with just blueprints now. So what would have been a, such a long, arduous process, and I'm talking thousands of hours in setting up your online multiplayer, you can now set it up relatively quickly in about 10-15 minutes to get your game on, up and running online in a dedicated server environment. Now, rather than me go through the process of setting up all this, I much better rather leave you to Miles, the creator of the plugin, who's got a nice rundown of how to install and set up and use the plugin. So I'm going to hand over to Miles, and he'll go through uh, what you have to do. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to uh, the Unreal Engine Marketplace, and we're going to need to download this multiplayer with Blueprints uh, plugin. It's going to get you Blueprint access to four AWS services, GameLift, Cognito, Lambda, and DynamoDB. We're going to be able to set up a full multiplayer uh, system, which will allow us to make a uh, party system, invite and join friends, uh, matchmaking, skill, skill or latency-based matchmaking, set up a secure login system, and we'll have a DynamoDB table, which is a NoSQL database so that we can store in-game data like a kill-to-death ratio or something like that. Um, in order to use a dedicated server, we're going to need to have a source build uh, of the Unreal Engine. So the first thing you need to make sure and do, I went over to this site. I just searched Get Permission Unreal Engine GitHub, which is going to get us to the site, which will walk you through the steps so that you can have access to the Unreal Engine provided by Epic Games. And then once you get that access and you fork that repository, um, I, I watched this video from Flopperam, um, how to build Unreal Engine from source. He walks you th through the entire process step by step, and then you'll have it all set up. You'll have a source build of the engine all set up. And if you head over to our website at blockchopstudios.com, you'll be able to find full documentation where I go step by step through uh, how to set up a matchmaking example, how to set up a party system and database. Um, I'm frequently adding new new ideas, uh, top questions, example projects, video tutorials. All of this is found inside of this plugin documentation uh, located on our website. If you are looking to go farther with this multiplayer setup. All right, and then the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and create an AWS account. Um, if you just go to aws.com, you should just be able to find right when you go to account, you should be able to sign up create an account then we're going to want to go to this IAM identity and access management and we're going to go to groups and we're going to create a new group and you can name it whatever you want I'm just going to call it my group one let's go to next step and we're going to give it this administrator access uh, policy and then uh, 
Now we're at review and then you can just go ahead and create group. I already have a group so I'm not going to, but you can just click create group. After you've done that, we're going to go to users. We're going to add a user. You can name it whatever you want and give it programmatic access and AWS man management console access. You can give it a custom password and this will automatically give it the IAM user change password policy. Uh, next we're going to go to permissions. We're going to add it to that group we just made, add this user to the group. And that's going to give it that administrator access that we gave it when we, when we created the group. Tags, we're just going to leave it. And then we're at review and then go ahead and create user. Again, I've already created a user, so I'm not going to, but you're going to click create user. And then if you go to that user and go to secret credentials and cre click create access key, it's going to give you an access key ID and a secret key ID and you're gonna to wanna to save those somewhere safe because we're gonna need those to connect to your AWS console. All right, so now next step, let's go ahead and download this Amazon Game of Server SDK right here. You can just find this by searching download Game of Server SDK uh, right there. Uh, next, and let's install the AWS command line interface, most likely for Windows if you go Installing on Windows, installing on Windows, it'll download the AWS command line installer for Windows, and then we need to configure it. And you can come right here, configuring, and that access key ID, the secret key ID we got from that user we just had, we're going to enter in right here. We do this by running this function inside of our command line. Um, default region, if you go to your AWS and go to the main page, it'll say what region you're in so and you can adjust that here based on where you are um, and then I just left the default default output format as JSON okay so now our next step is going to be to get this plugin that you just purchased installed into our source build of the engine the first thing we're gonna have to do is go into our epic games library and install it to the correlating epic games engine so that we'll have a folder that we're able to find it under so if you're using a source build of four point 2.2 or 4.23 or 4.24, install the plugin that you purchased to the correlating engine for Epic Games. So for me, I'm using a 4.23 source build of the engine, so I'm going to install it to my 4.23 Epic Games engine so that it is the correct version. So go ahead, hit install, and let that go. All right, and then our next step is let's go find that um, plugin that we just downloaded. It's going to be inside your engine. And then plugins, marketplace, and here's mine right here Cognito DynamoDB Game with Lambda plugin. And I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm gonna go find my source build of the engine. Same thing, engine, plugins, marketplace, and I'm gonna paste it right in here. So now that we added those files to our engine, we're gonna need to rebuild our engine with those files inside of it. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, run this setup.batch file as administrator. Then run this generate project files as administrator. And then we're going to need to open up this uh, Visual Studio file. And we're going to want to come over here to UE4 and build it with um, Win64 Unreal Build Tool selected. And now that our engine is rebuilt, we can go ahead and open that up. So I'm just going to go engine, binaries, Win64 to open up that engine and come down here. UE4 editor, click on that, and then I'm going to create a third person blueprint new project and save that where you want, and then we'll get started inside of there. So I have my example project I'm going to use right here. Then the first thing you're going to want to do is come up here, come look at your plugins, and make sure the plugin you have is enabled so that we can use it inside of our project. The next thing we're going to want to do is come down to this content browser and we're going to add a new C++ class and make it a character. The reason we're going to want to do this is so that inside of our project folder it's going to create this source folder inside of it. And that's going to allow us to make a server target so that um, we don't have to create one every single time with only a blueprint project. Because if it's only a blueprint project it's just going to be inside this intermediate and every single time we try and compile our dedicated server we're going to have to recreate this server target right here. Now, if you're looking inside of your source folder and you don't see a server.target file, it's no big deal. We can go ahead and we can create it for this project. 
you're just going to want to make a copy of the editor and paste it and change the name to server where it says editor. And then let's go ahead and open it up. Um, I'm going to edit it with notepad plus plus and every single spot where for this editor file that you would see editor, you're going to change it to server. So it's right. There's one right here. There's one right here and there's one right here. Just change those from editor to server and then this file will be good to go. All right. So now back inside of our project, let's go ahead and set up some blueprint classes. First one I'm going to set up is going to be a game instance. Go over here to add new blueprint class game search for game instance and create a new one. I already have mine game lift server game instance. Um, the first thing we're going to add into this game instance is this event shutdown. This is the only bit of code. Please don't do anything else in game instance um, or nothing will work. So just an event shutdown destroy the server if the game instance calls event shutdown. The other thing I'm going to be doing in here is storing variables that I'm going to need from one level to another. So when we're traveling, I'm going to have references um, so that I can use them in my first level and then use them in a later level. Then let's also make sure inside of our project settings that we have set that game instance to the one we just created. So let's see how mine's game of server game instance. The next thing we're going to want to set up is a process parameter and it's going to be created the exact same way as a game instance. Add new blueprint class process parameters. Um, I already have mine right here. And um, a process parameter is going to be used for cr uh, cross process call. It will be called by game of service to pass some value to Unreal proactively or tell Unreal what game of service wants it to do. For example, if a game of service wants to close the process without game session to scale down, process terminate will be called. Um, inside of our process parameter, all we're going to add is a parent call to all these functions. Um, and then to our health check right here next we're gonna need three maps to make this all possible so in order to create a new map you go to file new level and then you can create a map from here and save it I made uh, game entry third person example map and transition transition and game entry are gonna be empty levels and the third person example map is the map that um, is generated when we created this default project then let's head back over to our project settings and let's make sure our game default map is set to game entry and our server default map is set to that third person example map. All right, so now let's go ahead and open up the level blueprint for our game entry map. And the first thing we're going to want to check off of an event begin play is to make sure we have a reference to our game instance. From there, we're going to want to create a game lift object and supply the credentials from our AWS account. And um, go ahead and search game sessions. Um, for now, just this uh, fleet alias name variable I created, we can just leave it blank. Uh, we'll fill it in with the ID of our fleet once we set that up inside of the game lift interface. But just go ahead and search game sessions. If there is one already available, then we're and then we're just going to join it. We're not going to need to create one. So we can come down here and we're just going to create a player session and plug in the game session ID to that player session and then open up our server, uh, our server map for that uh, game session. If there is not already a game session, then we're going to need to create a game session and then create a player session with that game session ID. And again, go ahead and open up that server map for our, our game session. So now the next step is we need to make sure that, that our server accepts our player session. So basically all we need to do to do this is run the set player session ID, replicate it on the server, come down here and essentially all we're going to need to do is I describe player sessions and then uh, run run a loop for all the player sessions and accept the player session onto the server. Um, then also when the player session leaves, we're gonna uh, on event end play, we're gonna remove that player session from our server and reopen the game entry map. And then now the last bit of, of blueprint code we need to set up is gonna be our game mode, which we're gonna use for our third person example map. And basically on event begin play, check if it's the server and we're going to initialize the SDK, uh, link our process parameter and set the port, say process ready, and then our game mode's good. All right, now everything's set up so we can go ahead and launch our server. So I'm going to do this for Windows. I'm going to use my desktop, Windows server, Windows server, buy the book, make sure you're on advanced, launch and wait for everything to build. Now if you go in back inside of your uh, folders for your project and you go to your saved, 
stage builds, Windows Server. You should have your Windows Server. Now, for Windows, there's three files you're going to have to add in here because Amazon uses Windows 2012, so it needs these files to be able to upload, and I will link them in the video. But uh, this is what we're going to upload to Gameless. And now this is what you're going to run inside of your um, command line or Windows PowerShell in order to start the upload to Gameloft. So AWS Gameloft, upload build, operating system, Windows 2012, build root. You're going to give your build root and you can name it whatever you want. Build version can be whatever you want and you're going to add in the region you want to upload it to. Um, that's it. And now if you log into your AWS account and go to Amazon Gameloft under services, you should be able to see your build showing up right here. All right, so now that we got our builds uploaded, we need to create a fleet to go along with it. So let's go ahead and create fleet. Uh, let's give it a name. Select our fleet type. You can choose on demand or spot. Uh, the difference is that spot can be taken away with, two mi with less than two minutes notice by Amazon, but they are a lot cheaper. So you can use them here and there when at different times when they can be effective. Then we're going to upload our build that goes along that we just uploaded. Uh, I, for the instance type, I'm going to use the free tier. Um, as you get, you're just going to get better and better uh, instance types, more expensive, makes sense. Uh, then we're going to upload our launch path, which is going to be this game is essentially going to represent Windows Server. So you're going to upload everything after that, which should be the name of your project, binaries, win64, the name of your server, dot executable. I'm going to give it 20 concurrent processes, max concurrent game session activation. I limited to 20 per instance and left the activation timeout at 600. For my port settings, I'm going to have 7777, 20 ports open on UDP and uh, a TCP port which will allow us access into our full into one of our folders so that we can monitor how our server is doing. And then my protection policy, I'm going to select full protection and go ahead and initialize that fleet. Then I'm going to go ahead and set up an alias. It makes it easier for referencing fleets inside of our project. So just give it a name and select the fleet that you just created. And now let's go ahead and take that alias ID and copy it and go ahead and go back over to our project and inside of our entry map level blueprint we have that fleet alias name and we're gonna plug that in right there so that we have reference to our game lift alias and can put players into the game and now let's go back to our project launcher and this time instead of doing Windows Server just do default and I'm gonna keep it by the book make sure there's no cooking problems and then go ahead and launch and now that the project launcher has finished creating your client, you should be able to go back into your main root folder of your project, go to saved, staged builds, windows, no editor, uh, name of your project, binaries, win64, and then open up this application. And if you set it up exactly like me, you should be right inside of the third person example map. Or if you had your own level that you put it into, you should be inside of your level right there. So go ahead and open that up. Thank you, Miles, for that demonstration and your hard work on this plugin. I know for a fact that from talking to Miles, this plugin has taken a long time to develop, but it's something they've been developing while working on their own game, and it's helped them out massively in getting their online multiplayer set up. So if you're interested and find this useful, head over to their marketplace and check them out. Meanwhile, if you have a plugin or if you have an add-on or if you have a project that you want promoted or uh, talked about on this channel, please get in touch. Details are in the description below along with links to Miles and their work uh, for you to uh, check out. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. This wouldn't be possible without you guys and every little bit helps in keeping this channel up and running. So thank you to all of you. That's it from me and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.